Hey everybody, welcome to another video. And today we're going to talk about how I chose what to trade. Now, this is a topic that I wanted to talk about on this channel, mainly because this question has come up quite a bit. And I remember when I was first learning how to trade, there were so many different options, so many different people doing a lot of different things. And I needed to figure out what was the best for me. So if you stay until the end of this video, you'll get a full breakdown of my opinions on some of the things that I trade, as well as a few bonus tips that I wish somebody sell to me when I was looking to start my trading journey. So let's go ahead and get started. Basically, I tried almost everything. And when I mean everything, you will see towards the end of this video exactly what I mean when I was trying to find the thing that was going to work for me. So just a quick background about my journey. I started off actually as a long-term investor, taking about $1,000, putting it into Apple and just buying three shares and just over time, just adding to that position. So I've been doing that ever since 2011. Yes, it was scary. I've been wanting to do it, but finally took the plunge and I'm really happy that I did. Basically, long-term investing, so totally different from trading, I started doing that and that paid for two professional sabbaticals. Let me talk about that. So a sabbatical is just basically just a break from work in my situation because I work full time. Back in 2018, I quit a job in Silicon Valley. That was my dream job and it's definitely a company that you've heard of definitely a product that you probably use every single day. However, the job was insanely demanding, 70 hours plus a week. The travel was awesome. My people that I worked with were awesome, insanely smart. So I really liked that, but I just didn't want to work 70 plus hours a week. Like that was, that was just a lot for me and the things that I wanted to do in my life wasn't able to do it. So I took a seven month sabbatical that was all from investing in the stock market market, being able to pay for a whole bunch of things like travel. So I traveled pretty much across the United States, spent a couple months traveling throughout Europe. Here's a picture of me in Paris. There's some kind of parade or something that's happening. There's also a picture of me in uh, Belgium. This is Brussels, the Grand Place. If you ever go there, that is really cool to look at. And next, I went to uh, Bordeaux. This is a vineyard in Bordeaux. It was a winery tour. It was really awesome. Amazing experience. And then this is me in Switzerland. This is Jet Doe, which is basically just huge water jet. And then I went to a whole bunch of other places like the south of France. Like uh, I went to Cannes and a whole bunch of other places. When I was living my best life, like that is what I was doing. I was traveling. So uh, trading or not really trading, but long-term investing was that catalyst for me to do that. So 2021, fast forward many years later, I got an MBA from Yale. I wanted to take some time off from working full time. This was an executive MBA program and mostly investing allowed me to take off two years, two solid years from work, some trading, because I'll talk about that in a second. But basically I was able to go to Wimbledon, which was really awesome. And if you know anything about a tennis at all, you'll know that these tickets, at least at this time was 5K and up. So quite, quite uh, pricey, but it was an amazing experience. Really glad that I did it. Actually got to see Venus Williams play. So that was pretty cool. We were very surprised that she was actually playing that day. Um, and went to Paris, of course, that is like my second home. So just hanging out on the Seine, just looking at the water, looking at the tower and everything that's happening on the water. So pretty cool. So I started off trading actually in fall of 2021, taking it very seriously, seriously, meaning studying something about the market, looking at the market every single day. And I've been doing that exact same thing ever since. So this was something that I got introduced to back in 2018, but I did not stick with it consistently. I started off dabbling with crypto and just looking at Bitcoin. And then there was a lot of hype around altcoins or other coins outside of Bitcoin. And I remember just taking small amounts of money, putting it into Bitcoin, and I would look at it maybe a month or two later and like, holy crap, like this has grown a lot. So 
I kind of got my introduction to trading at that point, but like I said, didn't stick with it. And then once I finally got serious in the fall, I started to look at options trading. I looked at Forex commodities, specifically gold, trading that, indices, specifically US 30, actually really like US 30, and then futures in the future, maybe right now I've been kind of paper trading or just kind of looking at the gold market specifically within futures and just seeing if I could anticipate where a price would go. So that is pretty much my trading journey so far. So you may be asking, well, what should I trade? There's so many different things. So I'm going to break it down. And if you don't know, I am an engineer and I really like matrices or tables. And we're going to go through this table, basically me giving my opinion on what my experience was with these things. And you could take this information and process it and use it to your advantage. So I have all of these different areas split up between easy, medium, hard, and then just some notes. These are all based on my experience. Take it, uh, with a grain of salt or whatever. So basically the first thing I started off with crypto and basically BTC and Ethereum is essentially what I look at still to this day. I do a dollar cost average into Bitcoin. I've been doing that for the past, I want to say almost six months or so, just having it automatically taken out of my account. And it has grown. If you look at the price today, it's actually really cool. So it's, it's heading to a resistance. So who knows what is going to happen on that. But basically, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I think these are relatively easy because, like I said before, I put some money into Bitcoin back in 2018-ish time frame. Didn't really look at it. It went up. It was amazing. And the hard thing about cryptocurrencies, in my opinion, is just following random cryptos. And I say this because there are a lot of smaller coins, a lot of altcoins, and basically there are so many pump and dump schemes. So I just stick to the big ones. I've lost so much money um, putting money into like Dogecoin and just like random coins, basically, based on somebody's you know, thoughts about, oh, it's going to shoot up 400% or a thousand percent or something. And typically just stick to the big ones. That's been my experience. And that's something that I'll continue to do in the future. So next I tried options. So, and I still do trade options to this day. At this point, I'm actually changing my strategy a little bit, looking to hold options a little bit longer term instead of day trading. But as far as easy, I really like the spy. I believe that the price movement on this is really easy to follow and AXP which is American Express, it has been going up and up and up. And when you think about it, basically it's a high margin type of business where basically they do practically nothing but make a lot of money. So it's the same with other credit card companies like uh, Visa, MasterCard, et cetera. So if you look at those markets and just kind of study them, it may be something that you may want to trade. These have been really good for me the past one, two, three, four, like four, five months. Um, and I would say uh, as far as trading, as far as long term investing, I actually do have American Express. And I remember using technical analysis actually last year. And when it was coming down, I bought the dip. Now it's up 70, actually more than that, about 70, almost $80 per share, which is amazing for my long term account. But like I said, I also do some day trades with uh, AXP and it's really good. So medium, a spy, I put that in there, Apple. And in my experience, uh, it doesn't always follow market structure all that well. And there could be a number of different reasons for that. I don't really know. But uh, Boeing is kind of the same thing. It's been kind of stuck in a consolidation lately, pretty much not wanting to go below $200 at this point. And if you look at the uh, share price from uh, Friday, March 1st, you'll see that it stopped at $200 even. Not 201 and some change or 200 and some change, 200.00, which is insane. So, but this is actually, when this trends, this trends really, really well. And I really like that one. Um, Exxon Mobil, at this point, it's been kind of stuck in a 
kind of consolidation. And let me see if I got the chart. Yeah, I do. Cool. So uh, what I mean by this is it's been stuck in a consolidation and, and I'm currently in an options trade. You can see where I got my stop loss placed. If it goes below here, then I'm just going to get out. But basically it's been choppy. It's been stuck in this consolidation for about a month here. And then even uh, a little bit longer if we go all the way back. So it broke out and now I'm looking for it to go up to here and possibly go further. So we'll just see, but basically I'm looking to hold options a little bit longer term these days. So I use higher time frames for my analysis. And uh, this is what I was talking about with Boeing. Actually, I got to clear this out because I'm not currently in a trade. I think I got out somewhere here uh, because the price action wasn't looking good and i'm just waiting but basically you can see that it stopped at 200 dollars exactly kind of crazy so anyway going back to the list uh tesla is something that i think can be hard at times but i would actually put it in here tsla because sometimes when this is trending this moves really really nicely actually much better in my opinion than uh boeing or some other uh markets that's something that i trade in the past i've traded a lot of other things like facebook square which is sq i've traded netflix in the past netflix was actually really good one time when their earnings were uh, less than optimal and basically it just the market just fell and i made like three grand and 15, 20 minutes or something. I think there's probably a video or a short somewhere on my channel going through that. But uh, those are things that I used to trade in the past. Now I just try to stick with a few instruments just to kind of uh, make it simpler for myself. So basically here's some notes here. Markets with a lot of choppiness, it's just kind of going back and forth. Uh, it can be hard to trade at times. Like I said, sometimes Tesla gets caught up in that, Boeing's for sure, Apple for sure, and ExxonMobil for sure. So a lot of back and forth, it can be hard to trade, but basically what I do is I skip those markets and I wait for a breakout, just like I talked about with ExxonMobil, and we'll see what happens with that. Because the other thing that you'll realize on your trading journey is that your analysis could be 100% perfect, but of course the market can do whatever it wants, whenever it wants, and the market is always right. So even if your analysis is perfect, it's not a guarantee that it's going to go in that direction that you want it to go. So just food for thought. But basically, uh, like I was saying before, Apple, Boeing, Tesla, they don't always follow conventional market structures. So sometimes there'll be really big gap up or gaps down. And that could be due to a number of different factors. Sometimes I'll be looking at the news for these different things and it's not a news catalyst or anything. It, it just does what it wants to do. So that can make it a little bit challenging, which is another reason why I'm looking to trade these things a little bit longer term to give my trade idea a little bit more time to play out. So that's pretty much it on options. So the other thing that I traded was Forex. So in the easy category, we have AU, which is AUD, which is the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. That was really easy, pretty easy to trade. And for me, that market was a bit too slow. So I know there are some people who do trade it because it is easy. And there are some people who are killing it on those markets. So really good for them. But it just wasn't my thing. So the thing that I really like trading actually was UJ, which is USD JPY. And if you look on this channel, you will see that I do have some full market breakdowns for this pair. So definitely check those out and go ahead and get some knowledge about how this pair moves if you're interested in that. So in the medium category, we have GJ, which is GBP JPY, which is the British pound versus the Japanese yen. And this sometimes can be quite difficult. It just kind of depends on if the market is trending or not. This also chops around quite a bit. So I just did this analysis. So you should see this video already on the channel. So sometimes it can have like these really big wicks and that can make it quite difficult like right here this is some crazy price action for sure there's some consolidation uh, and then we have like a, a shoot up and then this really big wick and you think oh yeah it's about to take off but nope it comes right back down so sometimes that happens on uh, gj 
But, you know, it's just the nature of the beast. So, but a lot of times it does have some really clean moves. So that's why I put this in the medium and hard category. It just depends on where you are in your trading journey. So one of the cool things though about GJ is that there's a lot of volatility and this can potentially lead to large profits, which is probably why it's a quite popular Forex pair to trade. And I do still look at that as on occasion. I will take trades if I can catch them because with this being the British pound, a lot of the movement does happen in the London session and I'm not up at two, three o'clock in the morning, so I don't always catch them. But sometimes there are really good moves on GJ in the New York session, which is what I trade. And sometimes I'm able to catch those. So I still like GJ. I still really like UJ. I don't trade these all that often, but when I do, they're usually really good moves. So, oh, another thing I wanted to mention is that I've spoken to other traders that trade GU. So I put this in the easy medium category just because that's a pair that some people only trade. They trade GU and nothing else. And that could be really cool as well if you're looking for another Forex pair. So another thing that I've traded was commodities. And the thing that I'll put kind of in the easy category, I would say is silver. I traded this just for a little bit. I think I may have taken one or two trades on that but it wasn't really my thing. At least when I was trading it years ago, it didn't seem like there was a lot of volatility and it was pretty much ranging. So basically just going back and forth. But there are some people who do trade silver and do really nicely on this. So depending on your strategy, it could work. For me, it just wasn't something I was excited about. But one thing I was, was gold. So I still do trade this um, on occasion. It does have a lot of volatility. And I did do the best on gold when I practiced this in simulation for gold. So I practiced using a simulator. And then also I took 0.01 lot trades just to kind of test out my strategy. I did a lot of live testing on this. And once I think I want to say it took a, like a couple months and then it was like really solid. So uh, I really like gold. And then another thing that I tried trading was oil. I think I may have only traded this for about a month or so, but I really didn't like the price movement at that time. So I just kind of stuck with gold. And then once again, in the hard category, I do have gold and oil because I remember trading gold and then taking, I don't know, some months away from it and then coming back. And then it seemed to be harder for me for some reason. And that's why I did the simulation trading and the live testing trading with really tiny lots and now it's good. So this could be something that could work for you in any of these different Forex pairs or markets that you're maybe interested in trading. So another thing that I traded was indices. So specifically uh, S&P 500, NAS 100, and I put these in an easy category, but before we talk about that, I want to say that all indices move very fast. So I would not start with these at all. So these ratings that I'm giving for indices are basically if you have experience trading other markets. So if you're coming in cold and looking to trade these things, it may be quite difficult for you as a beginner trader. So get some experience maybe with like UJ or something, at least this is what I did. I got experience with other markets, stock market, and also some of the Forex ones. And basically, then I started looking at S&P 500 and NAS 100. So what I've noticed is that these actually move really cleanly compared to some other things that I've seen. So that's why for me, it's in the easy category. And tougher, medium would be US 30 for sure, but mainly because yes, this moves fast because it is an index. But at the same time, there's a lot of money in each candle on US 30. And if you look at US 30 pricing, let's just go ahead and look at it right now. So there's a lot of money in each of these candles. And this is just a one hour chart, but you can see that the price is at 39,021. At least that's where it stopped at when the market closed. So given that high of a you know, price, there could be a lot of money to be made in US 30 for sure, which is why it's one of my favorite indices. And I do have a video on this channel that talks about a $3,000 trade that I took on US 30. So I stopped trading it for a while, mainly because it required so much money from me. But uh, then I moved to other stuff, but I'm looking to move back into it because my accounts are growing. So 
We shall see. But basically, I am starting to back test this again. So literally in the past few weeks, I've been uh, back testing this kind of off and on. So and I'll continue to do that before I start live trading again. So anyway, so all of these have a lot of liquidity. <laughs> so there is a large possibility to make some money in these. So and the last thing is futures. So basically, the only thing that I've looked at in futures is gold at this point. And if you look at any of these markets like S&P 500, NAS 100, there is a futures equivalent to that. And one thing I have been noticing is, you know, with these mental or paper trades that I've been taking, for gold futures is that the movement is super clean compared to just regular USD or XAU USD, although it moves in a very similar manner. I don't know what it is about it, and I haven't looked at it at this point long enough to really see what's driving that. But basically, this moves really cleanly. So I've done a couple paper trades this past week, and they both played out, and I'm like, holy crap. I need to be putting some money in this, but I don't want to rush the process. I want to do a little bit more uh, paper trading. And the cool thing about futures is that you could have uh, the regular gold futures market, which the symbol is typically GC, or you can do micros, which is MGC. So that's mostly what I've been looking at because I believe it's something like a dollar. And it's and with futures, the way that you calculate potential profits is very different from any of these other things. So without getting too much into it, but basically there's definitely a lot of money to be made inside of futures. And at the same time, I have to be cognizant of how to calculate it. So like I said, Futures is very new to me, uh, mainly because of all the different things that have been happening with some of these prop firms and these offshore brokers. It's like, okay, well, let me find a, a US-based broker where I could trade futures because you're not allowed to trade XAU USD for whatever reasons. So basically, this is pretty much my take on the different things that I've tried. And like I said before, I've tried a whole bunch of things. And just when you thought this video was over, it is not, <laughs> mainly because I do have a couple of bonus tips and things that I wish someone would have said to me when I was getting started with all these different things. So basically what I did is I basically just looked at the markets that I was interested in and I did paper trading, I did simulation trading using some software. You can also backtest in TradingView as well. So they have this uh, replay feature so I've been using this a little bit and it's been helpful. It's not the best uh, in my opinion because there are other softwares out there that could really uh, help. But basically, it's better than nothing for sure. So just find, you know, whatever time frame you like to enter on and just kind of back test it that way. So this is, you know, let's just say we buy and then you move over and then you get you can see the price changing. So. Wow, that went down a lot. But anyway, so you can get out of that and just kind of back test in this software or some other softwares, whatever is comfortable for you. I'm also a fan of live testing using very tiny amounts of money, very tiny lots, and just testing out my strategy as well. Because with that, you get all of the feelings and emotions and all those things that you would get if you were putting on your regular risk size. So that's one thing. Second is only sticking to one, two, three different markets in the beginning instead of trading a whole bunch of things. So when I first started, especially trading crypto, I would have a watch list of like 20 different things. And if we go over to my trading view and oh, I don't know if we'll be able to see it fully here because my face is probably in the way, but let's extend this down a little bit so you can see it. So I do have different categories like crypto, I do have stock market, and then I do have one, two, three, four, five, six markets that I focus on, but obviously I don't trade all of those things all at once. So, and I'm actually looking to decrease that focus uh, category where I only focus on one to three things because what I found is that if I'm looking at one market, let's just say hypothetically I'm looking at the Boeing market and I'm also looking at SPY and four other things, sometimes I've missed moves, I've missed really high probability moves in one market because I'm focused on another. So where maybe in one market, the market is taking off and in another market that I'm looking at, I'm waiting for my setup to appear. Whereas in the first market, 
my setup was there and now it's gone and now it's too late for me to even enter. So that's why I'm looking to reduce the number of things that I look at in at a given time. So sticking to one to three things in the beginning and then trading one session. So this has been actually really key because when you're doing your back testing, you want to make sure that you are looking at the session that you would you would actually trade and not, you know, some session that you probably wouldn't because that's going to give you the best results if you focus on the session that you're actually planning to trade. And the third bonus is I just talked about that, but focus and then basically you could, I didn't finish my thought here, but basically you could essentially master that market if you just focus on, let's just say one market. I've known people who maybe just trade gold and they're killing it with gold because they focus on that one market. They trade one pair, one session, and it works out for them. Me, I have to look at multiple things, but I'm trying to cut down how much I'm looking at. Hopefully this was helpful. If you want this sheet, then go ahead and send me a DM on Instagram. And my handle is chart confidence on IG. So basically go ahead and find me there and then you could go ahead and get this sheet and just kind of use it as a guide. Uh, this is something that I just really just created right before this because it's all in my head and I wanted to share it and make sure that it was somewhat coherent with, as it was coming out of my mouth. So hopefully this was helpful. See you in the next video.